your main event, introducing the hosts of Wrestling with Freddy, Jeff Dye and Freddy Prince Jr. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of Wrestling with Freddy. With me, as always, is Jeff Dye. We have an amazing guest today. That's why I'm speaking so quickly so we get as much time as possible. Let's start the show. All right, everybody. We have a fantastic guest today. He is fresh off his victory at AEW Dynasty. We have the AEW World Champion, Swerve Strickland, who on this very show prophesized this very event, and he's with us now. Welcome back to the show. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's honestly, it still feels weird hearing the title of AEW World Champion right now. Still feel I'm not getting used to that yet, but I got, I'm going to have to. We're not surprised. We've been waiting for it, baby. We're all used to it already. Amazing. I want to start with this. You had your match with Samoa Joe. I just got to meet in Chicago and he's like the nicest dude ever. You just, you're in the match. It's, it's the finish. You're on top. The ref's counting to three. What the hell's going through your head at that moment? Are you still in it in that moment? Or are you already going, holy shit, it happened. Everything I said just came true. It was, it was like, if you watch the, the finish of the match again, all that realization came up like right at the top of that, the top of the rope when I was like standing up tall and you're seeing all the people start standing up with me. It's like they were ready to, it was like, it was like coming to a realization to the people as well. And it was just like the swell of like emotion, like, wow, I'm here. Like I'll even like grab my head at the top. It's just like, I can't believe this. I might be able to do this. Hitting the stop. First off, the fact that this show was like four hours and those people were still there, like just like they, it didn't feel like they were ready to watch a performance. They were ready to see vic- victory. They were ready for the that home team to win, and that's the emotion I kind of wanted to carry on to that. It's like you're not going to outperform Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson, and hats off to them. It's that's impossible task as it is, but it's just like okay, what kind of a different emotion that we can evoke that the rest of the show is not able to. And I feel like that we successfully achieved that in itself. And Joe was like the perfect, like Titan of a villain and a opposition to be put in that place to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the, like hitting that three count, it was like, history is made. We did it. it. It was really, it was really special and really, I made my mark in history and I feel like everybody gets into wrestling to try to do that, to try to make their mark in the business some way, somehow. I feel like now I did it. I did it my way and I did it by believing myself in myself and like not changing, not switching up, not conforming. I did it exactly how I said I was going to do it. The people believed in it. You talked about the Osprey Danielson match. You know, there's such different matches when you look at them from any sort of like analysis point of view, right? Because they're both special, but yours was much more narrative driven. It was much more story driven. Joe had planted this seed the week before about, about you maybe choking in these big moments and not being able to trying to put some sort of doubt in your mind, which I think makes the end of that match so much more special. Like you said, when you climb up on the turnbuckle and it's like, no, there will be no choking tonight. There will only be stomping on your chest. Which is funny because I almost lost by getting choked out. So there's <laughs> that kind of parallel as well. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Where are you currently finding inspiration story-wise, professionally? Are you looking back at the old stuff? Do you look overseas? Are you looking at current stuff? Is it coming from movies, comic books? Is it a combination of everything? Where are you finding inspiration for you, your character currently? I would honestly say I'm painting with a, another blank canvas again. And so I'm, like, I'm right now, I'm just gathering my tools. I'm gathering my instruments to start painting this, this iteration of Swerve. It's like we seen Swerve as like that hungry, predatorial like figure of like I'm hunting prey to try to get to where I need to go. And I'm taking out every other predator in the, in the kingdom, in the animal kingdom to try to get there. Now it's like, okay, you're at the top of the mountain. Where do we, how do we see him now? It's like, okay, now we got to, everything we built, we got to kind of scrap that a little bit 
but we kind of want to keep those core things that made me who I am. Like, I'm still like the guy, there still has to be a danger about me. And when I'm, and when I'm like faced with danger, or like when I'm faced with like threat, I come back 10 times harder because that's the kind of, that's what got me to where I am, you know? So now right now with Christian coming up with double or nothing, man, like I've, I found my threat. I feel like Swerve's character always finds his motivation, his inspiration through threat and danger. When he's faced with it, that's where the things like start churning a little bit. And that's where the narrative starts being created. So right now I feel like I've swiped it clean. The patriarch and Christian and all them came through. They set the tone. Now it's like, hmm, now I got to start painting my canvas again. Now we got to use different instruments, though, and different utensils to really start carving in different like piece. You it's know? easy. It's easy to want to beat the hell out of Christian. He, he's he, he's quick to motivate. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's quick, but it's like doubling up is like maybe like three weeks away. So it's like we got to paint. We got to get this art going. Jeff, go ahead, man. I know I've been hogging all the time. Uh, it's okay. We're both big swerve marks. This happens. You know, this isn't the same when we had some of these other creeps on. This is our guy. Very yeah, appreciate you guys. Last time you're here, you told us about turning down opportunities because you wanted to solely focus on the AEW World Championship. And now you're the champion of AEW. It sounds so sweet to say. How do you handle that? And also, are you bringing the belt everywhere you go? And if not, why not? I think that's what people want to see. They want to see why, what makes this person important walking into parties like that? What, like, why should we pay attention to them? Why is this like, why, like in, in those kind of like circles, it's like not wrestling circles either. And that's where like we need to be. That's where I need to be now. You know, I kind of got to like, like, and it's cool. I love like going to the conventions and signings and even independent shows. It's just like, you know, this, the places that built me, you know, this is the people that supported me and you want to give back to those people and it, like understand that you're there because their investment in you continued over all these years, you know, and you, uh, you kind of want to pay them back for that. They, they want to, if you want to feel their, their investment in you was worth it. So coming back and doing those things at the conventions, but also like now it's like the crossover stage of like, why is what makes this championship, this person so important to the landscape of the world? How much pressure do you feel as a champion to help bring professional wrestling to the mainstream and to make it not so much alternative entertainment, but mainstream entertainment. Do you feel pressure to do that? Or is it just, if I'm allowed to paint my picture on this canvas, I'll make sure people see it. Like, how do you approach that? Um, right. Lately, I've kind of been cooking up things even before the world championship. I've been cooking up things. And I've been planting seeds to see around this time is where they start growing and sprouting. So now it's just like, okay, we've been in the making of for a while and we've been like with investors. We've been with Oscar winners. We've been cooking with like Grammy winners and all these guys and all these people and male, female and all these groups. Now it's like, all right, we cashed out. Here we are. And we told you, and, and, and once again, we told them, we gave them a reason to invest. Now, here's the investment paying off. We told you we were going to honor our word. Here we are. Successful. AEW's first African-American world champion, like we said. And now it's like, okay, now we see the vision. Now those people see the the value. Now these people see the the, the, the grind, the story, the narrative. They see what this is truly about, the story. Really, and now it's like okay, now we kind of want to follow into the rabbit hole a little bit more because it's, it's, it's scary for people to just want to just jump in blindly in something they're not familiar with. Oh, believe you know? me, I know that. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> right. So it's like giving them that little bit of belief and that little bit of investment, and then like saying something and then honoring that word and now delivering on it. Now it's like okay, I feel a little bit more comfortable to jump in and follow you down this path that's unfamiliar for us. But at least if we're tethered with you. We feel like we're going to be okay. 
I yeah. feel like that's where that crossover is. The promise being you becoming champion and and the reward being you becoming champion. I mean, that's 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 basically right. what we're saying. Yeah. So if you go to the when right. you went to the gym this morning, did you bring the belt with you? <laughs> when you get coffee, oh, my guy, do, do you bring the belt with you? <laughs> I've had the je- belt with me all weekend in Miami. That was with like ASAP Rockies people, right? Who was it uh, with Puma and guys like that? Gave us a bunch of free stuff and uh, meeting with those those like those guys that invest in the ASAP Rockies. This is like, people want to see the celebrity. I'm like, the celebrity is great to be around and like take pictures with, but this is the people that pay the celebrities is who you really want to be like shaking hands with and do these photo ops with and these endorsement people that can like do these things. That's the people you want to link with. So it's like, that's what I was spending my time in Miami. In doing. the day to day, do you wear the belt around your shoulder? Do you wear it around the waist button? Do you wear, you put it around the neck? How, how do you wear it around? I do it over the shoulder. I've been having like my guests and friends like holding it more than I have because <laughs> they're like, well, like, oh my God, the man, let me see this. Cool. I'm like, here, here, have it here. This is a generous Check it out. My guy Clayton would be all oh, over there. Sure. I wanted to ask yeah. you this last time. I just didn't get it in there and I've been beating myself up about it. So it's, uh, I'm excited to get to ask you. This is also from my friend Clayton Thomas. Shout out. What was your perfect booking for Hit Row? Meaning, how would you have booked the group? I think when we hit the scene on NXT with the North American Championship win, I think that was like as hot as you could be, at that, especially at that time. You know, at that time, I think they had Samoa Joe as NXT champion, feuding with Cross. Mm-hmm. So they were tied up like there. But I think it was like Adam Cole and O'Reilly. Then it was like Joe and Cross and stuff. So going from doing what we did to like all the way to like getting drafted to SmackDown, I'm like, I think that was great. And I just think like, once again, uh, like it would have been cool to have more time. It would have been cool to like jump right into like something with like establish another, another established faction, not just Brianna Brandy, not being let go. And that's just us three. Mm-hmm. I think there was a lot of magic we could have made with a lot of different people there, but all these, all these things happen for a reason. If that doesn't happen, then you wouldn't see me here as a W world champion. So I won't be, I won't be able to make history without those things falling through. It was almost like a blessing in disguise, which was hard to see at the time, but it was just like, man, there has to be something more and we, something bigger waiting for me on the other side of that. And I feel like this was it. You spoke on a collision after you, you won the championship about sacrifices that had to be made on this journey, not just the, the obstacles that got in your way, but self-inflicted pain, sacrifice, right? Sacrifice away yeah. from family, away from loved ones, all to show that this dream isn't just a dream, but it's a plan. You're the champion now. And I would imagine you have less time as champion with corporate responsibilities and having to meet with investors and and travel all around and all the, the public engagement speaking announcements, doing this podcast and the hundred others that you have to do. Is the Do you feel like it's a greater sacrifice now, but it's still a part of the plan? Or have you been able to feel a lot of the joys that come with being a champion? Have you been able to share that with your family? Have you been able to show them, look, this is what happens when you do sacrifice? I feel like it it gets lonelier at the top as you go. It really does. And that's kind of like what I was somewhat expecting. And that's what a lot of people don't really understand about these things. It's like, when you sacrifice, you sacrifice, you got to give everything. You really do. Some people think like you, like you could have it all. It's like, nah, nah, not if you want to like be the epitome and the top of anything, you have to give up something because you have to like these people that are investing in you, investing in you require so much from you and your time and your energy and your mind and your spirit and your body. So, and if you, if you want, to reap the rewards of that, you have to sacrifice a lot. And if like you don't sacrifice, it's like, okay, you can be home if you want to, but you just can't have this. You can't have the best, best of this. And like, that's, that's tough. That's in people. That's why a lot of people go like wild. You see like a lot of these celebrities at the top of the game, like they go literally wild because there's a lot of people trying to pull from them. And there's not a lot of that, they don't get that other fulfillment from family members, loved ones, true loved ones, true family members, like their kids. They don't get a lot of that nurture, that true nourishment 
on the other side of things, it's, it's, all, it's off balance. It's all this, but very minimal of this. And that's tough for a lot of people. And I'm seeing it too. Like it's, 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 it gets a little lonely. It's a lot of like, I gotta, I gotta get in town two days earlier and I gotta leave hours later. Yep. And you, the, everybody else is going away back to the hotels or going back to go do this. I'm like, I gotta stay late. Work on, work with TV and work with production. I got to come in two days earlier before everybody else gets there and I can't set plans. I got to get there early because I got to talk to these news stations. I got to talk to these, like I got to be in person with the championship looking the best I can. So I got to get in the gym. I got to make sure I look good. I got to get these, these things in order. Sorry, the house is not going to get that thing put in <laughs> at the time because I'm not going to be here for it. I got to get out of here and leave. So I bought a house every year that I'm barely in because I got to be on the road to support this company that still needs to grow, yeah. you know, and it still needs these things the, with my kids and stuff. Like I see them when I can and I love to fly them out more, but they're getting older. They have camp. They have clubs that they got to be a part of. They have these things that they are, they are committed to now as they're 14, 12 years old, they're committed to certain things. So it's like, it's not like they were, five, six, seven years old, and they get just like, oh, we don't have nothing. We can just fly over and come see my dad for like a week and a half. I'm we don't have that. that anymore. My kids are almost yeah. the same age. I, I, I feel the same way. It's, and it's, you're, you're talking about yeah. the artist's life and the, and the artist's struggle. And, you know, to be great as an artist, there is a level of selfishness that has to exist. Jeff knows this as a successful comic. You know it in, in the wrestling profession. I certainly know it in the acting profession. And I don't mean selfishness in a bad way. I mean, there has to be f some focus on self to constantly be evolving and constantly changing. Now, you're in a position where you are now at the pinnacle of that sport and you're talking about all these responsibilities and, and the sacrifice. What is it you're doing? And if there's no answer to this, there's no answer to this. But what is it, what is it you do to recharge your battery? What is it you do to just be able to be you for a moment instead of having to be all these things for all these different people? What is it you do to recharge your battery? Uh, I'm a video gamer. So like I definitely <laughs> like I get into my games. Literally, people see me like traveling with this big TV to the airports. <laughs> I got the, the game case. Yeah, and I used they're to like, have one. Yeah, oh, man, I, I can't do it without it now. They're like, oh, what is this thing? I'm like, this is my serenity. That's what that is. Leave me alone. But that's what keeps my peace. That's what levels me out. Definitely my biggest battery recharger is seeing my children doing something with them, like flying up to the Pennsylvania area and like, like at this point we've seen like the, that area so much. I'm like, we've seen, they've seen Times Square on the, the ball drop. They've seen Liberty, the, the Liberty Bell. They've seen DC. They've seen the Capitol. They've seen the, the Rocky steps in Philadelphia. They've seen that we've been to the Lady Liberty and the Statue of Liberty and stuff. So like it's trying to find new things. I'm like, okay, we've been doing this for a while. What new things can we do? What they, you know, so. Now it's just like getting them to travel more because they don't really get to travel that often. So just trying to get them to travel more and like me experience new things with them. So we're both experiencing new things together. So that's the, been the new challenge for like, that's my, but that's my battery, like recharge every time. Go ahead, Jeff. You got something in there? I was going to ask him when he plays the video game, AEW fight forever, who does he pick? You know, do you, have you played as anyone else or is it, do you play as yourself? What do you, what do you, who do you pick? Oh, now I pick myself now. Like <laughs> it, 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 it took a while for me to get it back, get on the game. Yeah. But now I'm here. I'm like, yeah, it's it. like finally. Yeah, but before you were on it, you who'd you pick? I play with uh, Darby, and then like I got beat by Penta, and I was like, can't play with Darby anymore. <laughs> can't play with Darby. Yeah, Penta's <laughs> tough. <laughs> Penta's the guy I pick the most. Guys flying all over the place on that game. Yeah, so I like Darby. Nope, throw him out. Can't use Darby. I use uh, Malachi for sure because it was funny. Like in the in the 2K game, I. Uh, Mo capped Alistair Black. Okay. Yo, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool as hell. Is there a game you play that we would never guess you would play? Yeah. What are your favorites? I pl I started Evil West, which is like oh, an indie I game. I know which game that is. Know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it came out like probably I think late or early this year or late last year. But it's like it's like a a Western zombie game with like some. It feels like God of War in a sense. Like it plays like the new God of War. Mm -hmm. 
But I was like, okay, something just new. I need I need a new game other than Madden. I gotta <laughs> shoot something. I gotta get away from like like plays and all that stuff. I just need, need a, a change. What was it? Remnants two. We were on me and my group. Uh, mm-hmm. We played Destiny for a while. Again, I'm trying to think of a game that's like nobody would think I would play. Like I go, I, I can go way back, back to PlayStation games though. I like what what system uh, do you travel with? Oh, PS Five. Okay, so the PS Five, the, the yeah. nice, sleek, slim, it fits well yeah. in that super briefcase. Isn't is like it the, the games yeah. the G- briefcase the president travels? The one with. that says G A E M S because that's the same one. I that that whatever that company is, I don't even yeah. have to around it. That's anymore. the one I have. Yeah, I have it for Red Dead. Yeah, I travel like, with it in airports. Like a Van- Vanguard. Vanguard. Like Vanguard, yeah, yeah. that's oh, we all yeah. have the same nerdy thing. I still have it. Yeah. I play Red Dead in the hotels with it. They have a bigger one now, and that thing is like I've seen people play it in McDonald's. They just <laughs> set it up. It's like a seventeen-inch screen. Yeah. I'm like, that's, that's too ridiculous. much. That's heavy. Okay, man. Yeah, we're we're wrapping up the first half yeah. or first two thirds of this, and I yeah. want to get into some of the the external stuff. But are you when you're not wrestling? watching wrestling all the time do you have to take a break from it i know like some ufc fighters that don't watch the ufc they just compete in it but you right. said there's a pay-per-view next week they don't watch are you somebody who enjoys watching other wrestlers work or do you just not have the time to watch the 20 hours of wrestling there is a week i stick i i still keep up with weekly television programs just because i have a lot of friends everywhere and i want to see like how they're being used what they're doing and stuff that that week and stuff like that. So I, I, I do support like friends of mine. Even when I won the championship, a lot of those guys, they, they supported me and watched and gave me congratulations. Yeah. So I feel like it's only right to like, Oh man, I'm watching you guys too. You know, it's showing that support to them. Um, so that's where like that goes. I watch some highlights every once in a while. It's very rare. I watch like a full 30 minute match to study something. Sure. Cause I kind of want my ideas and my organicness of what I'm creating in the ring to just come from nothing. It just came from like, I would like to think so, but maybe somebody like, oh, that came from so-and-so from 1995, Super Juniors or whatever. Like for me, I like the inspiration to just come just right out of thin air or something like that. I'll even watch stunt, stunt reels and come up with movements and come up with different like um, transitions. How to just, me personally, I'm like, I'm always trying to figure out how to move people in a different, unique way. How do I create like just perpetual motion without just Irish whip and just running, <laughs> you know, like how do right. I move you in a right way? Get your shoulders in a certain position, get your hips in a certain position. So I watch a lot of those combat, just combat, like actual combat, just, just follow movement without having to move someone. I want to send you all my favorite Jackie Chan fight scenes from the 80s because that's like all oh, he did. there's man. a good chance I've already watched <laughs> You've them. You've already watched them. Yeah, <laughs> there's okay. a good chance I've already watched them. I've been watching them things for like, since like my first like 10 years of wrestling. I've, I've seen them, but I it, they are good to go back and like watch though. But still like a Tony Jai, someone else. Oh, hell yeah. I study a Michael Jai White, a Scott Adkins. Yep. My buddy Guy Da Silva. Who's I? I actually get to go to the the jam sessions in L.A. and work with him, and the guys who are like grabbing the phone and getting the cameras are like these guys worked on Shang Chi and stuff like that. So I'm getting like expertise, like you know. No, the list um, of names you gave yeah. is enough street cred right there. <laughs> <That's>, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are like these are guys I like that literally molded the last like I'd say five six years of what I've been doing. We got to get you the Tony Jai, the the elephant bones where he strapped him to his arms and you just man bust on Nathan Jones. <laughs> yeah. Front uh, flip into just double elbows. Crazy. Okay. Yeah, he's seen crazy. That. All right. We're oh, going to yeah. get into a, a bit of business here on the podcast. Don't go anywhere, Swerve. Uh, we have more with Swerve on our unsanctioned Thursday. You guys can hear the rest of the interview, but... We ask you guys to leave us reviews and we pick the best ones or the worst ones, uh, whether you want to be kind or mean, or we're going to read them live on the show. So this week is Brian Bose or Bose. I'm going to say Bose like the speaker. And he says, screw tribalism, more wrestling, please. All right. So this is going to be a nice one. Thank you for the five star review. And he says, so glad I gave this a chance. I'm not a day one listener, but was always intrigued. Intrigued's a great word, by the way. Plan on supporting the Fed once Freddie lands a TV deal. Oh, thank you for that, dude. I hope I do. 
I am an AEW diehard, but not a tribalist. Really rooting for you, Freddie. Brian Bose, you sound like an awesome dude. Thank you for that. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Swerve actually knows that I'm out with the wrestling project right now. You're one of the few people that I actually kind of showed the teaser to to get to get your opinion on. So I we are out with that. I've got only gotten one no. I'm close to a yes on one and two others I don't know, but it's been a while, so I'm starting to go, oh, crap, maybe it's a no. And then the other half of me goes, no, maybe someone's fighting for you. Maybe it's a yes. So oh, yes. I always think yes. <laughs> yeah, TV man. works so well. we shall. It does. It, it sure. does. And I'm used to movies, so maybe that's what it is. But you guys stay locked to Unsanctioned Thursday, and we will get a, a little more personal with Swerve and get to know the man even more than we have. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is Wrestling with Freddie, Wrestling with Friends with Jeff Dye, the AEW World Champion, Swerve Strickland. Make sure you tune in to Dynamite tonight, and we'll see all of you Thursday on Unsanctioned. This has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.